Okay, um, let me um, give to you Mr. Keith Kevin Robert Arguelles, the student regent of the University of the Philippines, to give us his response to all the insights that have been presented to us by our previous speakers. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Yan po kay President Pascual at uh, sa lahat po ng mga guro, uh, kawani at mga iskola ng bayan po na dito. Siyempre, una po, thank you po sa Third World Study Center and all the organizers of this public forum series for inviting the student reach. Eh. Dahil mahalaga po talaga na napapakinggan natin yung pananaw ng mga iskola ng bayan hinggil po dun sa mga kinakaharap sa usapin ng ating pamantasan. Before I start my discussion on this very important issue, um, allow me to share a short but very significant story. Uh, as the student regent representing the 50,000 undergraduate and graduate students of the UP system in the Board of Regents, I conduct comprehensive consultations on all our campuses to effectively represent student concerns. In the series of the consultations I have conducted this past semester, I was able to visit almost all our units, UP Baguio, the Demand, Los Baños, Manila, UP Visayas Miagao, UP Visayas Tacloban, UP Cebu, and UP Mindanao. Uh, in these consultations, I conducted a simple experiment on the demographics of the type of high school students that enrolls in UP. Before I start the consultation, I usually ask uh, all the participants, um, magtaas po ng kamay ang lahat ng nag-high school. And of course, naturally, all of the students uh, will raise their hands. At ang susunod ko pong gapapagawa sa kanila ay ipapababa ko po ang kamay ng mga galing sa private high schools. Kakaunti na lang po yung mga matitirang mga kamay. Ang susunod po ay ipapababa ko yung mga galing ang school ay public pero galing sa science high school, mas lalo pong kakaunti. Talaga pong bilang na bilang na lang, if not 5, 7, 10, yung mga kamay na matitira po dun sa ating audience. And after that, yung last ko pong screening, uh, yung screening ay kapag ang school mo ay public high school, pero nasa city, for example, Metro Manila, or your high school is in Mindanao, but uh, it is located in Davao City. Or kaya naman po ay one hour or less than an hour away from the sentrong bayan, doon po sa kanilang lungsod, ay ibababa ko din po yung kamay. Ibig sabihin po, hinahanap ko yung mga galing talaga sa mga public high schools from far areas, from the countryside, at uh, minsan po walang matitirang kamay. Pero meron naman po, merong dalawa, may isa. Are those in the far areas or countryside not worthy of UP education? Hindi po ba sila pwede maging iskola ng bayan? And uh, to note, we're actually building another UP in the Metro Manila, in Tagui. Aren't those in Metro Manila already overrepresented in UP? But going back, what could be the reason that high school students from far provinces do not go to UP? Of course, money is given. But we should also consider that they are at, the, at a disadvantage in terms of the qualifying exam. More than 70 students in every section, shared ancient textbooks, no access to internet, and lax classrooms or comfort rooms, do we really think that these students from public high schools in the far areas can equally perform with students from private high schools or science high schools? But it is not only the problem of UP. It is a reflection of the worsening conditions of the public education system in the Philippines. I think this story best summarized my discussion this morning regarding the question, Pangmaya naman na lang ba ang UP? But before I discuss further, I think it is proper to contextualize the terms mayaman and mahira in this discussion. What do we really mean when we say mayaman or mahira? The National Statistical Coordination Board defines mahira using the latest poverty threshold as those Filipinos who live with less than 46 pesos a day or 1,500 pesos a month. Meron po ba ditong may baon ng less than 46 pesos a day? Wala po. So wala po sigurong mahirap dito sa atin ngayon. This Philippine definition of poor is close to World Bank's Asia-Pacific uh, poverty line that defines poor as individuals who live in less than $2 a day or almost or around 100 pesos a day. 
Uh, but this is way below the minimum wage earner in the national capital region who earns around 450 pesos a day or around 9,000 pesos a month. Which actually, I think, most people still consider are poor. Tingin po natin, no, kapag minimum wage earner, medyo hindi pa rin kaya yung kanyang mga pangailangan. But actually, Filipinos who earn a lot more than this can still be considered poor on the basis that being poor means not being able to satisfy basic needs or lacking sufficient means to live at a society's standard comfortable life as uh, uh, universally defined. But for the purpose of this discussion, to answer our main, to answer our main question, let us consider the premise that to be able to come up to the decision na hindi po pangmayaman lang ang UP, we have to make it sure na pangmahirap ang UP. So, we, we, with our definition of Manira, is it? Does the poor have access to UP education? But is it just a question of access? In a data by the Department of Education, the average tuition per year in private secondary schools in Metro Manila is around 20,000 pesos with an average, seven, with an average uh, increase of 7% per year. Do you think or do we think that any of the family living in 46 pesos a day, $2 a day, or 450 pesos a day can afford a yearly tuition of 20,000 pesos? Easily, the answer is no. If they came from public science high schools, while others claim that it is hard to generalize because public science high schools are mostly mixtures, mixtures in terms of socioeconomic status, as this school requires a set of skills, uh, but actually not money to qualify, uh, one can easily tag science high schools as also schools for the rich, especially if you've studied in one. I came from Manila Science High School. Most of the students in Manila Science, as I have, subs as, as I have subs observed, are graduates of private elementary schools, either because uh, the quality of teaching in the public elementary schools is pitiful. I do not mean to offend. I graduated from a public elementary school. Or school projects and other school needs are so expensive or even transportation is costly. Most of my classmates in my four years of state in Manila Science High School uh, lives in Cavite, Laguna, Alabang, and Las Piñas who mostly own houses similar to the Grand Castles in Harry Potter. Hindi po ako nagsisinungaling. Nung, naka, nung pumupunta po kami sa mga bahay nila because we always have school projects, um, nagulat po ako. May mga bahay pa lang ganun kalaki. Na meron po silang mga iba't ibang telephone sa isang bahay kasi iba-iba yung wings ng kanilang bahay. In short, many of the students from my science high school are actually rich. But despite this, I've noticed few incidents that can answer our discussion or can help us answer our discussion question today. Why some of my batchmates opted to study in Pamantasan Lungsod ng Maynila instead of UP, even if they uh, actually qualify in UP? According to them, because vision in UP is high. Maybe they are part of uh, the ter uh, one third of qualifiers that don't enroll in UP yearly, arguably because of the cost of tuition. Why some of my batchmates don't even try to take the UPCAT? Well, according to them, they can't afford it. And uh, besides, entrance exams in La Salle or in PLM are provided for free in the, in, uh, uh, to students of Manila Science. But actually, what was mentioned earlier by Director Franco, that application fee for those coming uh, uh, from families with an annual income of 100,000 or less, ma will waive yung application fee. Pero ang sabi niya po kanina, the misconception is you have to take the OCAD review for you to qualify in UP. Kaya feeling nila wala silang pera pa din to study in UP. But actually, don't we think it's because they do not trust their competence? Because they uh, came from underfinanced and under-resourced public high schools. That's why they don't think they can pass or qualify through OPCAT without undergoing, uh, without undergoing a review. I know someone in my batch from Manila Science who, know, uh, who walks to and from the school every day and eats sliced tomatoes with salt for lunch to save money. He is an OPCAT qualifier 
but he opted to study in La Salle. According to his parents, they cannot pay the tuition in UP, so free tuition offered by La Salle will actually help them. They will just have to think about his transportation and food allowance. But, you know, he can always walk and uh, eat kamatis with a uh, seed. But what about the few that came from public secondary schools? Do they not serve as a proof that poor or that the, that the poor have access to UP? Actually, either they are the ones that can't afford uh, in the public high schools because one of the parents works abroad or the student came from a hard-working, struggling family or they are just really rich but they do not have any choice but to attend the public school just like in uh, many provinces. If you've met a uh, Promdi or someone from the province that is here in UP, I've met quite a few in uh, uh, during my uh, stay in UP Manila, they are usually the well-off or rich families in their provinces, even if they are graduates of public high schools. <coughs> but, if they, but if they are really poor and they can prove it, they can always approach Professor Gonzalo and uh, apply to the socialized tuition program of UB, right? Most of us have tried, and many students are still are still trying. But if we take as an example the Mahira, as we have defined earlier, given that the student will easily qualify as bracket E2, enjoying not only free tuition but a uh, but a stipend per semester, is there any other reason that the student cannot study in UB or the question should be, is this enough to make UP education accessible? If a student is from a family of farm workers in Ascenda, Luisita, who earns around 10 pesos per work day, with all four members of the family working in the Ascenda, will he or she be able to study in UP? So, tignan po natin. Assuming that all farm workers in Hacienda Luisita are given four work days a week, but actually in reality, uh, they're just given two to three times a week. Um, and all the family earnings, they have four members, for six months will be saved for just the studies of, a, of a one children for him or her to study in UB. They will have actually a total of 960 pesos for one semester as an all-in allowance of the student. So, tignan po natin kung makasurvive siya sa 960 pesos. Of course, he will apply to STFA and he will easily be granted uh, a bracket of E2. Well, that's uh, after years of answering forms, signing up, submitting documents, and struggling during the process. So, the student will be granted free tuition and a stipend of 12,000 pesos per semester. Now, the student uh, will have 12,000 pesos, 960 pesos for a semester. Tama po? Medyo hindi po ako magaling sa math. <laughs> Nag-removal po ako ng math 11. Since they live in Tarlac, Asyenda Luisita, the student will need to buy a two-way bus fare that costs around 400 pesos and stay in the cheapest boarding house costing him or her 500 pesos per month or 3,000 pesos semester. So, pag ganun po, makakaiwan pa po siya or magkakaroon pa po siya ng imaminus po natin yung pamasaya niya at boarding house, meron pa po siya 9,650 pesos para sa pagkain, pamasahe, libro, iba pong, at iba pa pong mga pangangailangan sa school. At um, kung i-assume po natin na siya po ay magkakaroon ng food expense ng 150 pesos a day, so 50 pesos per meal, talaga pong strict, pag lumagpas, hindi niya nakakainin, um, it will cost the student around 27,000 pesos per semester. So kung meron po siyang 9,650 9, at 27,000 po yung kailangan niya para makakain araw-araw, wala pa po yung ibang gastusin, uh, ba, um, malinaw po yung sagot. Hindi po mabubuhay yung isang mahirap na tulad niya sa loob po ng ating pamantasan. Ang tinatawag mo nating pamantasan ng bayan. But assuming that the student will eat once a day, borrow all the books from his or her classmates, never photocopy any required readings, 
depend on others, always depend on others for pen, paper, and notebook, forget about using computer, internet, and printer, walks around the campus every day, and actually ignore the fact that uh, his or her family is dying in Tarlac because he or she took all the family earnings, remember? He can or she can survive a semester in UP. But we're talking about Piliman. If the student is a student of UP Manila, almost all, except, almost all expenses will have to be doubled. Wala po kayo mahanap na boarding house na 500 pesos per month. You get my point, and we get to answer the discussion question. Pangmayama na lang ba ang UP? And so what can the Section 9 of the UP Charter do to make poor students in UP? Yung Section 9 po, ang sinasabi, lahat po ay may karapatang mag-aral dito regardless of social economic status. The democratic access provision in the National University. Unfortunately, so far, none. Honestly, I don't see the point of discussing this. Easily, one can answer our discussion question by just looking at the cost of education in UP. The present cost of ed UP education, which averages to 40,000 pesos a year, stands as the highest compared with all the other leading state universities in the country, such as PUP, na meron po 1,200 pesos per year bilang tuition, ang PNU at ang Mindanao State University na merong 2,000 pesos per year bilang tuition fee. Comparatively, UP tuition is 3,000% more costly than that of PUPs and 1,900% more costly than that of PNUs or MSUs. The cost of UP tuition, while less expensive than the top two private universities in the country, which is Ateneo, na meron po 110,000 per year at the minimum, and uh, the La Salle University, which uh, is around 180,000 per year at the minimum, the, U the cost of UP tuition is still within the range of the tuition cost of some of the biggest and most expensive private universities in the country such as the Far, Far Eastern University, 80,000 pesos per year. University of Santo Tomas, 70,000 pesos per year. University of the East, 60,000 pesos per year. Adamson University, 60,000 per year. Culeo de San Juan de Letran, 35,000 pesos per year. Less expensive. UV's tuition cost is also higher than the national tuition cost average, according to the Commission on Higher Education, which is around 19,000 pesos per year, way, way higher. In Visayas and Mindanao, call, calling UP a public institution has become a joke, with its tuition costs being the second most expensive in the respective regions. In the UP Mindanao, the cost of tuition in the Ateneo de Davao is just around 44,000 per year. <coughs> While in Cebu, in the University of San Carlos, the tuition is just around 50,000 pesos per year. Pumapangalawa po yung ating pamantasan. So having said this, the answer to our fundamental questions, does the poor have access to UP? Is UP accessible to the poor? Is UP being true to its mandate of democratic access? The answer is no. And the answer to our today's discussion question, pang mayaman na lang ba ang UP, is a simple and easy yes. If UP will just recognize this as our problematic reality, which is uh, the first crucial step in solving any problem, maybe we will be talking about now how to change this problematic reality instead. The week before this forum was actually a disaster. Students coming from all our campuses were sending letters to my office, emailing, texting, and calling me all about registration problems. Sa UP Diliman po, ang mga estudyante may utang sa student loan. Kahit po na-assign na sa mas mababang bracket sa SDFAM, ay kailangan pa din magbayad ng balance nila sa loan bago maka-enroll. For example po, may utang ako ng 15,000. Uh, for example po, ako po ay dinipot sa bracket B. Nag-SLB po ako, so may utang ako, for example, ng 15,000. Nagbayad po ako ng paunang 5,000. Pero hindi naman yung totoong bracket ko. Nag-apply ako ng SDFAP. Nag-grant po na ang babayaran ko lang dapat sa SEM na to ay 6,000. 
Pero hindi po yun automatically i-deduct. Bago po ako maka-enroll, I have to pay my balance of 15,000 pesos. Sa UP Manila po, hindi na po pwede ang late payment. Hindi lang actually i-deny ng Office of the Vice President, ay Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, but actually, hindi na po mismo babasahin yung sulat. As in, may note po sa pinto ng Office ng Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs na bawal tumanggap ang opisinang ito ng, li ng liham tungkol sa late payment. Magpapasalamat daw po dapat ang mga sudyante dahil na-extend ng one week from November 16 to November 23 ang bayaran ng 20,000 pesos na tuition. Madali po siguro man in one week ng 20,000 pesos. Sa Ubilus Banos, bawal na ang promis promissory note sa may mga utang sa student loan. Kung hindi po kaya bayaran ng balance, na nareklamo po, in the words of those who process student loans in UPLB, maglowa na lang po sila muna at magtrabaho para mabayaran ng utang kaysa mag-enroll at umutang ulit. Lahat po sila to note ay willing magbayad pero naghahanap lamang ng paraan para makabayad. These are the few poor students, quote-unquote poor, that we have in UP, barely surviving. But through our present policies, just as what I shared to you, the systematic increase in laboratory and other fees system-wide, and the change in the UP tuition default from 1,000 pesos to 1,500, UP have launched a full-blown witch hunting against these quote-unquote poor students and others who cannot pay. So allow me to change my previous answer to the question, pang mayaman na lang ba ang UP? Opo, pang mayaman na lang, pero hindi lang po basta pang mayaman. Because para po sa mga iskola ng bayan at sa mga kabataang hindi po nakakapag-aral, bawal po ang mahirap sa UP. Maraming salamat po at maganda po ba. Salamat, Lee, for that very passionate uh, response.